Okay, uh, so in this one, we're going to find all the different thetas that work between 0 and 720 degrees when sine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. Uh, so I think I still have it in here. Yeah, so here's the definition of sine, y over r. So I could think of this as y over r. Now remember, r has to be positive. So that negative has to go with the numerator. So we could think of this as negative root 3 over 2. So let's kind of picture this. The y value has to be negative root 3. So it's got to be down here somewhere, like negative 1, negative 2. So negative root 3 is about 1.7, right, around here. And the r value is 2. So if my radius is 2, then I've got a circle going around like this. And I need the y value to be negative root 3. So it, ha it definitely happens in the fourth quadrant here. But you also get a y value of negative root 3 over here too. Right? This y value would also be negative root 3. The radius would still be 2. Right? Okay. So um, you might realize that this is a part of a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. So this angle right here opposite the root 3 is the 60. So this angle, this is a 1, this is a 1. This angle would also be 60. So if we, uh, if we try to figure out, okay, remember, you got to measure angles starting from the positive x-axis going around. And so that first angle gets me all the way to here. So that's 180 plus 60 degrees. So this is going to be like my first theta that I could look at would be 180 plus 60 degrees, which is 240. But it doesn't just have to be there. It could be 240. It could be 240 plus 360 to get to there or plus 720. So I'm going to write it like this. 240 plus 360 times K, where K is an integer. Okay, the other angle that we need is the one that gets me to here. So you could think of that as 360 minus 60. You could think of it as rotating the opposite direction as counterclockwise, so clockwise. If you go clockwise, then that would be considered negative 60 degrees. So you could say negative 60 plus all the extra rotations all the way around the circle if you wanted. Um, so, and if you think about it, if you make k equal 1, well, then you're already at 300 degrees. So if you prefer the 300 plus 360k, that works too. Okay, so we need all the angles between 0 and 720 where we get this. So uh, between 0 and 720, if k is 1, well, actually, first, if k is 0, I get 240 degrees. This one will be negative 60. That's not in between, so that doesn't count. Um, then if k is 1, this will give me 300. This one will give me 600. And then when k is 2, this one will give me 660? Yeah. And this one will be out of the range. So these are all the thetas between uh, 0 and 720 degrees. By the way, this thing right here, that is called our general solution. Whereas this thing down here is more specific. That's based on certain conditions that we have. A lot of times I'll end up asking for a general solution. Okay, let's look at number seven. Seven is kind of related. So seven says, find the three smallest positive values of theta such that sine, ugh, such that sine theta is 0.751. So we can think of this as 0.751 over 1, and then using that definition, it's y over r. So in this case, r is 1. So I got a radius of 1, and the y value has to be 0.751. So uh, radius 1, y value 0 0.751, 0 0.751 right here. And it doesn't just happen in that quadrant. Right? It also happens over here in this quadrant. So radius 1, y value 0.751.
Okay. Um, so we need to get one angle somehow. So if I do, let's do theta 1 for this angle right here, theta 1. So theta sub 1, uh, I know that sine of theta 1 is going to be the y value over the r value. Well, the y value is 0.751 and the r is 1. So this equals 0.751. To get theta 1, we're going to use sine inverse. Sine inverse of 0.751. Well, sine inverse of 0.751, your calculator is going to give you this answer, 48.667 degrees. Okay, in degree mode, otherwise you're getting radians. Uh, so that's 48.7-ish degrees, right? Well, that means that this one over here is also identical. That's going to be 48.7 degrees. But I can't measure from there. I need to measure it from here. So that's really 180 minus the 48.7. So theta sub 2 is going to be 180 minus 48.667, which ends up being about 131.323 degrees. So now I've gotten, uh, let's see, I'll use a different color. I've gotten this angle to here. I've gotten this angle to there. The next time this happens is when my angle goes all the way around till I get back to here. So that's really theta 1 this one plus 360 degrees. So it's 48.667 plus 360, which ends up being, let's see, oh, I forgot all my degree signs here. That ends up being 408.667 degrees. Okay, one question that I'm gonna mention a lot in class is uh, when you do sine inverse on this, how do you know which angle you're gonna get? How do you know that it, why does it spit out 48 as opposed to 131 degrees, right? Because there's an infinite number of thetas that work that give you 0.751 because you can always add 360s or use the symmetry to get the second one. Uh, and so it turns out that when you type in sine inverse of something, sine inverse, the angle that you're always gonna get by default falls in this range right here from negative 90 to 90. So theta is always going to be in negative 90 to 90. That doesn't mean that the answer you want is in between negative 90 and 90. You may want the one that's over here instead, so you'd have to use the answer you got and use symmetry to get this guy. Um, if you use cosine inverse, then you end up with answers that range from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. And if you use tan inverse, it also falls into the same category as sine inverse. You get thetas that are between negative 90 and 90. Um, we'll talk more about why that is the way that it is as time goes on. But for now, you just kind of have to know, okay, what if I wanted the second positive one? Well, your calculator is going to give you this one. You'll have to know to use symmetry to get that one. Okay. All right. I hope that helps a little bit. And we'll talk more about it in class.